Okay, uh, grab a cup of coffee. Today we're going to start a new series, so pretty exciting, and we're going to come back to Angular. It's been a while since I released videos on Angular later of last year, but believe it or not, I already forget most of Angular, and I wanted to get a little better at it and uh, kind of refresh my memory on Angular, and I thought, why not make a new series where we just talk about Angular and hopefully a way that you know people can understand. And if you're looking to start a series with someone that knows every single thing about Angular, this is not it, because I don't. But my goal with this is to make it uh, easy to understand, and hopefully anyone can walk away with this, at least knowing the basics enough that they can make an Angular web app. And I'm showing you this because my last Angular series on here actually did pretty well in terms of like views and, and engagement and that kind of stuff, which is awesome. So hopefully, you know, this series gets as much engagement and people benefit from it the same. In the last series, we went through the Tour of Heroes tutorial together, start to finish. So if you want to check that out, uh, it should be its own playlist, I believe. But today there's really no goal. We're just going to start from the very beginning and just create things as we go. I don't have anything structured and hopefully this doesn't come out as a mess. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's enough for the intro. If you like this kind of stuff, feel free to subscribe. So if you're new to Angular entirely um, and you don't even have it installed or the Angular CLI installed on your machine, I'm not gonna go through all of that because I already have it installed. I'm not gonna uninstall it and reinstall it, but it's pretty simple. You just want to download Node.js this is going to facilitate um, downloading the Angular CLI, the command line interface, which we use to create projects, components, all that good stuff. Serve up our app so we can check it out. And right now you can see version 16.14.2 is long-term support. Personally, I recommend the long-term support because I see it as more reliable than the current. But, you know, it's your life. You can do what you please. Uh, if you want to feel a little edgy and go to the current, by all means. Try it out. And once you have that installed, uh, you just go in the command line. I had it right here. Yeah. In the command line, um, you can just do npm install dash g angular CLI. And this will probably take a while to fully install. And if you want to see what version you end up with, I have VS Code. That's what I'm going to use probably for the majority of this series. So I highly recommend it. It's free. And I'm just going to hit control and tilde the button above the tab. And this pops up a new terminal. And I'm just going to write ng dash dash version. And it's going to spit out some stuff. And by the way, ng is like angular. It's, it's pretty much saying this is an angular um, statement. And you can see my angular CLI is 12. I see they're on version 13 already. However, it's not long-term support. It's currently active. So they're continuously, you know, throwing out patches and bug fixes. So I'd rather just stick with something that I know is going to work. And I'm cool with being on 12. I'm not going to upgrade. So once you have that installed, uh, let's go ahead and just create pretty much the skeleton project, as I call it. And I'm in a new folder here. Nothing's in this folder. I have it open here on the Explorer on the left in VS Code. And I'm just going to run ng new and then a name of a project. So let's call this relearn. And this will probably take a while to uh, get together all of the necessary packages and everything we need for Angular. And I'm going to say yes to routing. We'll talk about routing too in the future. And they give us like a, a good scaffolding for routing. So I'd rather use theirs than create my own from scratch. So we'll hit yes. And I'm going to go with just plain CSS. And now it's going to install all of these packages that Angular depends upon. And hopefully in the future too, we are going to add other packages to Angular. So while this is going on in the background, let's go back and check out something I found. I was like, let's get some good Angular um, website examples. What company websites out there that are probably known by a lot of people are actually built with Angular? I wanted to give some examples and I stumbled upon, is this? Yeah, this is the site. I don't know how current this is because I feel like they've probably upgraded their website by now, but madewithangular.com, they have a list of sites that are created with Angular. Here's one I found interesting, Delta Airlines, their website is made with Angular and they claim it's version 6.19, we'll go, whoops, I guess we'll reopen it. We'll go see how true that is, that's 6.19. Um, but here's the site, but if we hit F12, 
and we look at the elements, you can see inside the body there is the app root, which we'll touch upon. But you can see there's a property called ng version, and the version is 6.1.10. Okay, so back in VS Code, it looks like everything um, has been installed. And now if we open up the relearn project that I just created, you'll see a bunch of stuff here. But if we go to the source directory is what I call it, the SRC directory, this is pretty much the meat of the project. And you can see the first file here, index.html. This is HTML page that other things are put into. So right here, you can see the title of this web app is relearn. And let's go ahead and serve this up and take a look at the web app in the web browser and see what it looks like. So back down in the command line, I will run ng serve not server, serve dash O like that. And the dash O means open it up. So not only is it gonna serve and going to listen on localhost, it's also going to open it up to us in our default web browser. So I'll hit enter. Oh, and that's because we're not actually in the project. I am in directory above. I'm in this relearn Angular. So we have to go into this relearn project. So let's CD into relearn and try that again. So here it's compiling uh, the web app, and this will take a second, but sooner or later we'll see Chrome pop up with our Angular web app here. And here it is. Here is our out-of-the-box Angular web app. And if you notice the title that we saw before in that index.html, it says relearn. So if I wanted to, I can change this to relearned. Past tense, I guess. I don't know why you don't want to do that. But if I hit save, you can see it recompiled real quick because it noticed we made a change and saved. And now the title is relearned. So kind of cool. So this, like I said, is pretty much the main um, HTML page that everything else is going to go into. And if you're familiar with HTML, you might notice a lot of these tags like head and body, but you might not know what app root is. Right, that might look foreign to you. An app root is a Angular component, and a component is just a piece of HTML and some code behind that is going to do something in the web app. And this is saying, put that component right here. And if that sounds confusing, don't worry. Once you create your own component and you add stuff to it and then put it in the web app, it'll make a lot more sense. But if we go back to the Explorer here and I expand app, I go a little bit farther. Here is all of the app component stuff. And for now, let's ignore everything but app component.html. And I am going to take everything out of this HTML page. I'm going to delete everything. I don't know why all that, there it goes, okay. I am going to put an H1 and say, hello, Angular, exclamation point. And I'll save. And we'll check it out. And now you can see all that stuff before it disappeared. And here it is. But our relearned is still there because it's in that index.html. This right here is the HTML of the app component. And so if you want, um, and you're following along, which I hope you are, feel free to add some more HTML. So add a whoops, add an H2 and say this is my first app. We'll save. It'll compile again. We'll look back at it, and down below, it'll add that H2. Add some stuff to this. Um, add some unordered lists or whatever, and hit save, watch it recompile, and go back to your web browser and check out your new HTML. But I guess the main takeaway here, and the thing I want you to get from this is, this component here is kind of like a, a placeholder, right? This is being replaced with this. And in the next video, we'll see how it knows that. How do we know that this app root tag is actually linked to this HTML and it's displaying this? So hopefully that wasn't too much for your first video, but if you're following along, and I hope you are, um, yeah, just get comfortable with uh, changing some stuff in this HTML, play around with it, throw some different elements in here in this app component HTML in the app directory that's in the source directory in our relearn project and save, watch it recompile and go check it out. And in the next video, we'll look at the TypeScript 
of this component and see how this is kind of linked up. I'm excited for this. Hopefully you are too. And I think uh, that's it. Yeah, if you like it, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned for part two. We're going to look at the component TypeScript, the metadata, and the class. And um, yeah, that'll be it. So thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.